Topic three, motion and forces. We're going to be looking at vectors, speed and acceleration, distance, time graphs, velocity, time graphs, forces, resultant forces, rules about forces, weight and terminal velocity. So vectors, a definition of vector is something that has a size and a direction, size and a direction. For example, force is a vector, it has a size, for example, five newtons, and a direction, in this case, to the right. Velocity. Velocity is speed in a certain direction. So because it's got the direction, it is a vector. For example, this rocket here, the speed is 300. The direction is up. Size and a direction makes it a vector. Displacement is distance in a certain direction. So going from school to home, you might go along some roads via your friend's house, via the park, via the shops. Um, that is the distance that you have travelled. Your displacement is a straight line from the start to the finish with a size and a direction. Speed. Speed is how fast something is going. We've used this equation since year seven. Distance divided by time. If distance is in metres and time is in seconds, your speed, the units, will be metres per second. Acceleration is the rate of change of speed. So you're speeding up or slowing down and it's about how quickly you do that. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. To work out the change in your velocity, you do your final velocity minus your start velocity, but most of you can do that anyway quite straightforwardly. The units for speed are meters per second squared because you're doing meters per second divided by another lot of seconds, which gives you meters per second squared. Distance time graphs, because they've got distance on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. A straight horizontal line is stationary, the distance is not changing. If the um, distance is changing, the line will go up. A straight line is constant speed. The steepness of the line tells you the speed. If it was a steeper line, it would be going faster. This one shows accelerating because as we can see the steepness is increasing, therefore the speed is increasing, so this one is accelerating. Velocity time graphs. Stationary would be zero velocity, so that's the horizontal line down at the zero. Here the velocity, whatever this number is, is staying the same, so that's your constant velocity or constant speed. <clears throat> Straight diagonal line, the velocity is increasing, which would be acceleration. One thing you might be asked to do using a velocity time graph is to find the distance travelled. Some people then try and use speed as distance divided by time. It's not going to work. With a graph, you're looking for the area underneath the graph. So you split it up into sections, triangles, squares or rectangles, and knowing that a triangle is a half times base times height, rectangle is base times height. Work out the area under the graph to find the distance travelled. Some common forces that you need to know. You need to know that weight is the downwards force because of gravity. We'll come back to that a bit more in just a second. When uh, an object is on a solid surface, the surface pushes back up on the object. That is called a support force. If you have a pulling force in a string or a rope or a, uh, a rod, that's called a tension, that pulling force. As you try and move something along a solid surface, you get friction where the two surfaces meet. It pushes back against the direction the object's moving. Weight again, all objects on Earth have weight because of gravity pulling downwards. If the object is sitting in water, the water will push upwards. This time the upwards force is called upthrust. In the air, the upwards force keeping something up is called lift. The driving force, the driving force of an engine is called thrust force. If something's moving through the air, the air will hit into it as it moves and that creates a drag force called air resistance. Resultant force is the one overall force that is the same as when you combine all the other forces acting. So for example, this box has five newtons to the right, 10 newtons to the left. Overall, that's just the same as having five newtons to the left. This five cancels out five of those ones. So your overall is five to the left. In this case, the 12 and the eight add together because they're in the same direction. We take away 10 from the others, pull in the other way, which leaves us with 10 overall to the right. These two we have balanced forces, the same in opposite directions, so our overall is zero. Little example then, if I've got a plane moving forwards, we've got thrust of 12,000, air resistance of 600, the resultant would be 600 that way. So although we have quite a lot of thrust, not all of it is being used to make it move forward. Some of it is being used 
to balance out, to cancel out the air resistance. A few rules about forces. First of all, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So if one object pushes on another, the second one will push back with an equal amount. So our two objects here are the rocket and the air. The rocket pushes down on the air, so the air pushes up on the rocket, and that's what makes the rocket go up. Now about our resultant forces, if there is no resultant force, if the forces are balanced, the object can do one of two things. It will either be stationary or moving at a constant speed. If there is a resultant, then that overall force will make the object accelerate in the direction of the resultant. The amount of acceleration depends on the size of the resultant force and the mass of the object. Units, forces in newtons, masses in kilograms, acceleration in metres per second squared. Weight, a little bit more about weight. As we've already said, it's the downwards force on an object because of gravity. It's a force, so it's measured in newtons. It depends on the mass of the object, the amount of kilograms, the amount of stuff, and the strength of gravity. Now remember, gravity on Earth is 10. Terminal velocity. When an object falls through the air or through a liquid, it will reach a maximum constant speed where it won't be going any faster. How does it do this? Well, first of all, when it first is dropped, the only force is weight. It's not moving yet, so there is no air resistance. Because there's only one force downwards, it will accelerate in that direction. As it accelerates, it's speeding up, it's hitting into the air, so the air resistance will start to increase. It will keep going faster, the air resistance will keep increasing until it's equal to the weight. We now have balanced forces. There is zero resultant, so the object moves at a constant speed, which we call terminal velocity.